Okay, Nuka Knight, second set between Perfect Man and the King of Queens. Although I'm not really expecting to see Queens today. Um, I think that was mostly... Well, you never know. You never know. I won't say that. And okay, here we go. Except up at the 2 o'clock position in red is zero. Let's see if he has that smirk on his face. Uh, I think he's kind of hiding a little smirk. But okay, down at the 8 o'clock position in yellow is Perfect Man. Look at him, he's so angry. But actually, Perfect Man had a pretty good counter to... Well, he had a pretty good follow-up, rather, of that a cannon of the hatchery. He took down the hatchery with the cannons, and he prepared for Mutilus, which were coming, and he had a very good uh, response to that. Had put down two Stargate, got plenty of Corsairs out to deal with it, and he fought it off. And after that, he should have been fine uh, fighting off that two-base attack. He would have been able to go out with the Zealots and what have you. There wouldn't have been any troops out for zero, and there probably weren't many troops out for zero. All he had were Mutas, so with the Corsairs escorting the Zealots to maybe that new base as Zero was put, re-putting up his 5 o'clock base, he probably would have been able to take it out. So his follow-up to his follow-up, not so good. Yes, there is a wonderful picture of a cat uh, killing and dismembering fish. That is absurd. But okay, the spawning pool coming up for Zero. And man, Zero, he just had the perfect response in that game. He saw that he was going, he lost all of his mutas. So he said, okay, that's not going to work. He's probably going to destroy me, but I should get up my Hydralis. Get a nice ball of Hydralis and just keep the pressure at the front. And that is what Zero is best at, adapting to the situation. But yeah, that was a little bit embarrassing with the, the double cannoning of the bases. And if he'd reacted a little bit faster, he would have been able to save that 5 o'clock. But coulda, woulda, shoulda, that game is behind us. Let's move on to this game on Fighting Spirit. Okay, perfect man. Looks like he's finally going to come in and get the scout. Very smart of Zero to bypass that probe. So he might be able to get his hatchery up now. Race against the probe. And there comes the hatchery just in time. So Perfect Man did not manage to deny that this time. So I think that will definitely make... Wow, that's white women in the audience. That is something I never expected to see. I actually had a black subscriber say once that <laughs> if he went to Korea to watch the games, he would they would probably put the camera on him. I would say, yeah, they probably put you in picture in picture and keep you there the whole game because Korea... Yeah, they don't see a lot of different people there. But okay, here comes the probe. He's running around. Uh, and now the Zerkling's going to try to come down. There's only one cannon morphing in. Okay, here comes a gateway to do a little bit more blocking. But okay, Zero, I'm not sure if he exactly knows where Perfect Man is at the moment. So that is why he's just skirting around with these Zerklings. He might have been able to do the run by, but I think he kind of lost the timing on that. So now Zero is going to throw down third base. And do pretty standard macro game, I think. Uh, at least it's looking like so far. Still only one cannon in. But Zero, I don't think he's going to try to press his luck. If he picks off maybe one of the probes, uh, he might be able to do this. But yeah, Perfect Man has a couple of probes in. Blocking that small little, little area where the Zerglings would run by. So not going to be able to break through. Just yet, anyway. Uh, knowing Zero, though, he's a very unpredictable player. He... He has so many builds, and sometimes I think he's just he just improvises. He just goes in, does whatever. Because I'm remembering his game, especially on Heartbreak Ridge, when he was dominating that map, his builds were just spectacular. Went all just uber ling builds, much like Type B's build against Stork on that map. Uh, in the last OSL, was it the last? No, it was the OSL before that. But yeah, that uber ling build, very very scary type of thing. And not to mention his queen build on Heartbreak Ridge, too. Just so unpredictable. Bisu did not see that coming. I, re I still remember Bisu's face when he saw all of his High Templar get broodlinged. That is something that will stick in my brain for a long time, I think. I casted that one with Ranchin, too. Oh, yeah, speaking of Ranchin, Ranchin wanted me to uh, send you a message. We were talking earlier. I said, no... He said, oh man, if it's light versus zero, I want to duel this. I was like, no, light got defeated by perfect man. And he said something along the lines of, well, I, I shouldn't say it here. There are children li listening, I'm, I'm sure. But yes, he wanted me to send you a message. 
Uh, and I, that message basically is, I hate perfect man. So yes, that is that. And also, I guess I should rant a little bit because uh, Ranchin got his uh, Let's Play. He was so excited about his Final Fantasy XIII Let's Play, and Square Enix freaking blocked it. They uh, took it down, even though it is clearly not violating anyone's copyright, I think. I mean, if it's a cutscene, even if it's a cutscene, I think in a video game it's uh, fair use. I studied copyright a lot in college, so I'm pretty sure it is fair use. But hey, how is he going to fight it? If they tell YouTube to take it down, they're going to take it down, uh, whether it's legal or not. So, pff. Square Enix sucks. Final Fantasy 13, linear piece of crap. Okay, I haven't really played it, so I shouldn't say that. But okay, the Overlord is going to die very shortly. But hopefully Zero can get a little bit of a scout. That's why he's pulling his Overlord in here. Can the Overlord scout what's coming his way? Got a scout inside of the man. He does see the Templar archives, and that should be enough information for him. And I think he might have actually seen that Stargate pumping too. So great information, great scouting information for Zero. Worth, worth the sacrifice of the Overlord. And let's see what Zero does. I don't see all of his larvae morphing at the moment, so I think he's just going to get out a few Scourge and then eventually get out his army of Hydralisks. Bum, bum, bum. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, it looks like Perfect Man is coming over, scouting the 9 o'clock position. He's using his uh, Corsairs for initial scouting. And since he has two out, he's probably going to be able to take out one Overlord before the Scourge get to him, although it might be a little bit close. Scourge coming out, living for a fraction of a second, but uh, their lives were not in vain. They took out one Corsair. It looks like another Corsair is skirting back to the base, back to the natural expansion. And there was another Corsair out there, too, found an Overlord at the 10 o'clock, but uh, Perfect Man decides it's not worth it. And Zero, I think he saw the uh, glitch on the map. This is this would be very good play if that's the case, and I think it is. He's running right by this Dark Templar, so I think he was trying to see where it was at all times. Maybe, I'm not sure, he kind of lost track of it there in the middle. But that Dark Templar is coming up. It's going to meet an Overlord, though, so I don't think he's going to be able to get much done. Uh, High Templar finally coming out for Perfect Man. Hey, Templar Archives. It's a wonderful thing to have. Here comes the Dark Templar sneaking behind the base. Let's see how many drone kills that Perfect Man can get. Still sneaking by... Oh, man, he might not, be, not even get one drone kill. Oh, come on, Perfect Man. you got to make this Templar worth it. Pick off one drone. You had the perfect opportunity there to pick off one drone. Oh, and the Dark Templar goes down. Zero kill, Dark Templar. Yeesh. 